Hello, my sweet summer children. I'm back with some juice to get you through the long night. So Game of Thrones Season 8 and the book The Winds of Winter is all kind of far off. We got about six more months before Season 8 and who knows when we'll get Winds of Winter. And I've been doing some rereading and I stumbled upon something that could be my most epic find, at least in my own opinion. Now, this may sound so utterly crazy, but I just feel like this can't be a coincidence. Now, we think of a feast, we think of a happy thing, but is there one feast that was happy in a Game of Thrones? Most feasts were marked with disaster and death. A feast seems to actually represent death in A Game of Thrones and A Song of Ice and Fire. So the book, A Feast for Crows, is basically a symbol of death. Crows feast on the dead. When Jaime is standing vigil over his father's body, Tywin Lannister in the great Sept of Baelor, the crows are circling overhead. And Jaime makes notes of all the feasts that Tywin had provided the crows through the years. Every crow in the Seven Kingdoms should pay homage to you, father. From Castamere to Blackwater, you fed them well. This is a very powerful quote, and it represents death and all of the death at Tywin's hands. But feast just seems to represent death in general. You would think that, well, no, actually weddings seem to represent death in A Game of Thrones. Rob died at the Red Wedding, but he didn't die at the actual wedding. He died at the wedding feast. That's the same with Joffrey. Joffrey dies at the wedding feast, not the wedding. And Joffrey's wedding feast was extraordinary. There were 77 courses of food served at the wedding feast while the people of King's Landing were starving. But anyway, that, that doesn't matter. We relate both feast to death. The feast at Winterfell's Great Hall marked the start of the chain of events that would ignite a war and almost destroy House Stark. The septons and priests of different Westerosi religions speak of feasts in heavenly halls. Death should hold no fear for a man as old as me, but it does. Isn't that silly? It is always dark where I am, so why should I fear the darkness? Yet I cannot help but wonder what will follow when the last warmth leaves my body. Will I feast forever in the Father's golden hall, as the septons say? Even the followers of the Drowned God believe in endless feast in watery halls. My brother Balon made us great again, which earned the Storm God's wrath. He feasts now in the Drowned God's watery halls, with mermaids to attend his every want. So we have multiple characters in the story who dream of being at feast. And while at these feasts, some of the attendees are dead. So is there some kind of symbolism that George is laying down here about these dreams of feast or feast in general? Should we be looking at them more carefully? Am I just hungry? I don't know. Well, we know that George R. R. Martin seemed to be influenced by some aspects of Norse mythology. We can see Norse mythology all through A Song of Ice and Fire. So in Norse mythology, there is a place called Valhalla. If you've watched Vikings, you know about Valhalla. Valkyries have taken him home to Valhalla. Valhalla is this magical, heavenly place, basically. It's an enormous hall in Asgard, ruled over by the god Odin. Half of the people who die in battle are brought to Odin's hall by the Valkyries. In Valhalla, the dead warriors prepare with Odin for the final battle of ice and fire between gods and giants, known as Ragnarok. While they are there, the feast is endless. Boar never ends. The Valkyries pour ale into curved horns and serve the tables. It's an endless cycle of fighting, dying, and feasting over and over again. So during the reread, I was picking up on all these feasts that occur in people's dreams and the symbolism of it all and what it really could mean. I've always thought that the crypts of Winterfell were a sort of Valhalla and that the dead kings could rise from their crypts to fight the Night King in the Battle of Ice and Fire like Ragnarok. Sort of like the dead of Dunharo in Lord of the Rings. So I started to think even deeper. What if something is being foreshadowed here? So if a feast represents death, then what could be going on? So I went back and I started to look at the dreams that characters are having that involve feasts. I'm going to start with Theon because his dream is the most grotesque of them all. That night, he dreamed of the feast Ned Stark had thrown when King Robert came to Winterfell. 
The hall rang with music and laughter, though the cold winds were rising outside. At first, it was all wine and roast meat, and Theon was making japes and eyeing the serving girls and having himself a fine time. Until he noticed that the room was growing darker. The music did not seem so jolly then. He heard discords and strange silences, and notes that hung in the air, bleeding. Suddenly, the wine turned bitter in his mouth, and when he looked up from his cup, he saw that he was dining with the dead. King Robert sat with his guts spilling out on the table from the great gash in his belly, and Lord Eddard was headless beside him. Corpses lined the benches below, gray-brown flesh slothing off their bones as they raised their cups to toast. Worms crawling in and out of the holes that were their eyes. He knew them, every one, Jory Cassell and Fat Tom, Porther and Cain, and Hullen, the master of horse, and all the others who had ridden south to King's Landing never to return. Micken and Shale sat together, one dripping blood and the other water. Ben Fred Tallheart and his wild hairs filled most of the table. The miller's wife was there as well, and Farlin, even the wildling Theon had killed in the wolf's wood the day he had saved Bran's life. But there were others with faces he had never known in life, faces he had only seen in stone. The slim, sad girl who wore a crown of pale blue roses and a white gown spattered with gore could only be Lyanna. Her brother Brandon stood beside her, and their father Lord Rickard just behind. Along the walls, figures half seen moved through the shadows, pale shades with long, grim faces. The sight of them sent fear shivering through Theon, sharp as a knife. And then the tall doors opened with a crash, and a freezing gale blew down the hall, and Rob came walking out of the night, gray wind stalked beside, eyes burning, and man and wolf alike bled from half a hundred savage wounds. So Theon is literally at a feast with dead people, all of whom we know. Now this dream occurs in A Clash of Kings, so we know this dream is prophetic in nature because it shows Rob Stark joining the feast. Both Rob and Grey Wind have half a hundred savage wounds, which they got from another feast, the Red Wedding. Now it's prophetic because the Red Wedding has not happened yet. The Red Wedding doesn't happen until A Storm of Swords, which is one book after this book. But why is Theon there? Why is Theon feasting with the dead? Samuel Tarley tells John about a dream that John has that we'll get into a little bit later, but Sam says that the living have no place at feast for the dead. So could this dream foreshadow Theon's death? Not only his death, but his death in Winterfell. Theon is attending a feast in Winterfell, so this may very well be where Theon dies. Say what you will about Theon, he is definitely one of those characters that's being set up for a redemption, and Theon belongs more in Winterfell than he does in the Drowned God's watery halls. Next, there is Tyrion's dream. Tyrion's dream of a feast. After the Battle of the Blackwater, Tyrion is given milk of the poppy, and he has some dreams, but one is of a feast. This time, he dreamed he was at a feast, a victory feast, in some great hall. He had a high seat on the dais, and men were lifting their goblets and hailing him as hero. Marillion was there, the singer who journeyed with them through the Mountains of the Moon. He played his wood harp and sang of the imp's daring deeds. Even his father was smiling with approval. When the song was over, Jamie rose from his place, commanded Tyrion to kneel, and touched him first on one shoulder and then on the other with his golden sword, and he rose up a knight. Shay was waiting to embrace him. She took him by the hand, laughing and teasing, calling him her giant of Lannister. Now this dream is different than Theon's dream because Theon's dream is gross and everyone's like zombies and leaking guts and stuff. But this could still be prophetic in nature because the theory is that dreams of feast relate to death. Tywin is at the feast and we know that Tyrion later kills him. Shay is at the feast and we know that Tyrion later kills her. Now Jaime and Marillion are also there. Marillion 
is a singer that is blamed for the death of Lysa Aaron. He is supposedly dead, well at least that's what they tell Sweet Robin, but actually he's still alive in the eerie, he just doesn't have his eyes and he's missing like fingers and stuff. So he's probably somewhere in a sky cell, I reckon. But Tyrion wasn't fond of him, so why would he be at this perfect feast with Tyrion? Well Tyrion doesn't recognize the hall that he's in at the feast. It's not Winterfell, it's not Castle Rock, it's not King's Landing or any other identifiable hall that he's dined in because he doesn't identify it, he just says some hall. So I'm thinking he could possibly be in the Eyrie, or if it's during winter, then at the Gates of the Moon. And since the living have no place at the Feast for the Dead, does this mean that Tyrion will die and so will Jaime? Tyrion says he wants to teach Marillion a sharp lesson. He does not like him, so maybe Tyrion wants to kill him. Tyrion is pissed with Jamie about his lie that caused him to lose his first love. So maybe Tyrion's feast is made up of people that Tyrion will kill. Two of the four people are there Tyrion has killed, Tywin and Shay. So could Tyrion kill Jamie and Marillion and then somehow he dies and somehow this all takes place in the Vale? Now John also has a dream of a feast. Well, of a feast that he can't enter. We know that John has dreams of the crypts and an empty Winterfell and wolf dreams, but John has one dream in particular. I don't even dream of ghosts anymore. All my dreams are of the crypts, of the stone kings on their thrones. Sometimes I hear Rob's voice and my father's as if they were at a feast, but there's a wall between us and I know that no place has been set for me. The living have no place at the feast of the dead. Now we know this is the feast that Theon is at, the feast in Winterfell, but Jon can hear Rob and he can hear Ned, but there's a wall between them, he can't get in, and there is no place set for Jon. So what does that mean? Does that mean that Jon is not fated to die? He dies in season five, but he comes back in season six. The living have no place at feast for the dead. Samuel Tarly also has a dream of a feast. His dreams were strange that night. He was back at Horn Hill, at the castle, but his father was not there. It was Sam's castle now. Jon Snow was with him, Lord Mormont too, the old bear, and Gren and Dolores Ed and Pip and Toad and all his brothers from the watch. But they wore bright colors instead of black. Sam sat at the high table and feasted them all, cutting thick slices off a roast with his father's greatsword, Heartsbane. There were sweet cakes to eat and honeyed wine to drink. There was singing and dancing and everyone was warm. When the feast was done, he went up to sleep, not to the Lord's bedchamber where his mother and father lived, but to the room he had once shared with his sisters. Only instead of his sisters, it was Gilly waiting in the huge soft bed, wearing nothing but a big shaggy fur, milk leaking from her breast. He woke suddenly in cold and dread. Now Sam's feast dream is a curveball because let's be honest, who doesn't think that Sam will live at the end of this thing? So Sam is back in Horn Hill, his rightful place. He's the Lord. Everyone at this feast is still alive in the books, but not Lord Commander Mormont. He is dead. Pip and Gren are dead on the show, but not in the books, but they very well might die in the books because Gren and Pip have been sent to East Watch by John. So the men of the Night's Watch, they just all seem doomed in my opinion, so I think they're all gonna die, but John is there, and so is Gilly. Maybe John is there because John does actually die and he's resurrected, but he does die. We know in the show that Sam does have Heartsbane as he does in the dream. But could this dream mean that Sam and Gilly will die too? The living have no place at feast for the dead. So if all these dreams are true and prophetic and these feasts actually represent death and the afterlife, then by the looks of it, Tyrion, Theon, Sam, Gilly, Dolores, Ed, and Jaime will all die in season eight. But Jon will live because in Jon's dream, he can't get into the feast. There has been no place set for him, and the living have no place at the Feast of the Dead. But what do you think this means? I just think it's too much of a coincidence for everyone to be having these feast dreams with dead people in them. It's just too much of a coincidence, especially when you bring in the representation of feast throughout the books, throughout history and mythology and all of that. 
but I want to know what your opinion is. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks to everyone who supports me on Patreon. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please click that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and join the Sweet Summer family. Okay, my sweet summer children, have a good day.